Good morning. God bless you. We are coming to you live from Zurich, Switzerland. I am Pastor Curtis, and you are watching Resurrection Live uh, 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 Church Service because we're here every Sunday. We're live, and we just teach you the Word of God, the Word that God has given us to share uh, for this particular Sunday, and we welcome you, and we're believing that God will speak to you and any need that you have. If you need healing, if you need peace, if you need joy, whatever uh, finances, whatever you need, we're believing that God would meet your needs. Amen. And and I want to say this to you out there in TV land. Happy New Year. Happy, blessed, prosperous, multiplied, healthy, uh, good New Year for you. Amen. And remember, no matter what goes on around you or in your world or in our world, no matter what goes around uh, comes around, God is still in control of your life. God will protect you. God will help you. God will be there for you. Amen. He said this, I will never leave you. Oh, that's good to know. I'll never leave you. I will never leave you, nor forsake you. I'm there for you. I'm with you. So rejoice. Amen. Rejoice. Hallelujah. Now, um, um, I want to read some, uh, some things that Dr. Uh, Kevin Zedai, uh, that God shared with him for uh, 2022. And then we're going to read this Psalms, okay? And here's uh, starting verse 1. It says this. Because it seems like God, what God is doing in this particular year, 2022, is he's drawing his people back to him. Now, I'm going to tell you this is some things that are going to happen to you, to you, to you. You're going to come to a place, and it may happen or it may already have happened, where you will lose desire to watch that TV program. You will lose the desire to quit wasting time doing what you know is nothing. You will lose a desire to play these games or to uh, hang out with these people because they don't have your same values. I saw a picture. I wanted to use that picture, but I didn't have enough time. I would have had to do my whole sermon all over again just for one picture. So I said, I'm not going to do that. It's too much time. But it was a picture that Dr. Kevin put on his website, and it was a picture of a pear. And pears are one of the most underrated fruits in the world. Pears are good. Pears are good with cheese. Pears are good with meat. Pears are good. But there's a picture of this pear, and right next to it was another pear that was just rotting. And the, the, ever, uh, the, 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 the photograph said this, if you hang around the wrong people, you will start to rot like the people you're hanging around. So don't hang around rotten pears, right? rotten people. This is the year that God is going to sever some relationships that you had that don't belong in your life. Sorry to say that, but it's true. Quit hanging around. Somebody said, uh, um, 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 your closest five friends, your five closest friends are the ones 
who literally you can it's a photograph of your life your five friends your five closest friends is a photograph of your life and if you don't like those friends you need to cut them off this is mafia Ugh. get rid of them I'm telling you, this is the year to get rid of them this is the year to get rid of all of that stuff that's holding you down because I'm telling you the year 2022 we already talked about this is a year of God's open hand towards you if his hands open towards you then you are going to have to come to him also amen you got to draw near to God and then what the Bible says he will draw near to you hallelujah now a lot of the things that God is going to do this year he with his hand is going to orchestrate them he is going to give you a desire to read the Bible more. And you know, the, uh, the more I look at this, this is a year where the emphasis is going to be on the Word of God. It's, it's actually going to be on the Bible. In other words, uh, one, one word, he said this, faith will be restored. Faith will be restored. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, I told somebody uh, years ago I was in Vietnam, and I, you know I was raised in church. My daddy and mom pastors. I mean, I was raised in church. We always prayed for our food before we ate. Always. I mean, you don't even touch the fork at my house until you pray. And what you, what are you doing? You're praying a blessing over the food. I just think it's almost animalistic to sit at the table and just start eating with no gratitude with no thanksgiving with no acknowledgement that somebody provided the food Hallelujah. say even if even in public if, if I'm at me grow or cope or a restaurant around here and I'm eating in public I, I don't let the whole world know I'm praying I'm in public but I do bow my head for a second and say Lord bless this food and lift my head up and I begin to eat that's blessing and acknowledging that God is the provider. So when you begin to do those things, you know that God is a good God. But here's the thing. I said all that to say this. You can get to a place where you always do this, like I did in Vietnam, and I pray for my food, 2 o'clock in the morning, I was sicker than three dogs. Three dogs. You say, you pray for your food? Yes, but I did not use faith with that prayer. Yeah. I said it like a poem. I just said it. I didn't put my faith out there on it. And therefore, I got sick. Yeah. And I was in my bed and just... I was wishing my wife was there because, you know, your wife always comforts you. One guy said to me, he says, one reason why I want a wife is because when I'm sick, she can come and help me. <laughs> that is true. The wife does help you when you're sick. But when the wife gets sick, the mad husband's pretty mean. He's not so nice as the wife is to the, to the thing. How do I know? Okay, anyway. So I'm in my bed. I'm sick. And I knew, Lord, forgive me for not using faith in my prayer. Because, you know, we can quote all kinds of scriptures, but if you don't activate with your faith, you don't use your faith, you don't have pure faith, that word of God is not going to work. The Bible says, not being mixed with faith, the word of God did not profit them. Mixed with faith. That's how the word of God comes to pass. Amen? So when it says that he will be, uh, that faith will be restored, God wants us to literally use his word, believe his word, confess his word, expect his word to work, and he's going to make sure it comes to pass in your life. Amen? Now, let's start with verse 1. It says this. This is the theme of 2022. Verse 1. You only are truly happy when you walk in total integrity. Now, what does that mean? Well, this is not the year to not walk in integrity. This is not the year to be lying. This is not the year to be 
um, um, uh, deceiving somebody. This is not the year to rob somebody or cheat somebody. No. If you want to walk in the prosperity and the blessings of God, you're going to have to take this word. Uh, you're only truly happy. Now, remember, there's a difference between happy and joy. They're, they're not the same thing. Happy, a lot of people are happy because of their, their, their condition or happy because of good news. But joy comes from the Holy Ghost. It stays. Amen? That's a, a gift of, of God is that, that God would give us joy. And from that joy derives the strength to walk a Christian uh, walk because the joy of the Lord is my strength. Anybody feel weak today? If you do, you need, joy, you need the joy of the Lord. How can I have joy when I'm weak? Because you know it's his word and he'll make it come to pass in your life when you believe it. Amen. It says, uh, and it's still in verse one, walking in the light of God's word. In other words, doing what the word says. You know, um, there's a scripture that says this and I, you know, it says this, it says this. He who has been forgiven much. Anybody know? Oh, is that true? Okay. He who has been forgiven much loves much. And when I see people judging their own brother and sister, especially in the church settings, I say, you don't, you don't, you don't believe that you have been forgiven much. You believe that you're righteous and you're self-righteous and you're good. Because if you really understand how much God forgives you just in a day, Hallelujah. you would love everybody and be merciful to everybody and be nice to everybody. Yes. Yes, Amen. Yes. It's time to be nice. It's yes. sad to tell Christians that they have to be nice, but it's just true. You got to tell Christians to be nice. Yeah. Be nice. Yeah. Be sweet. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It, it's not hard to be nice. It's not hard to be sweet. Now, I mean, I'm using my wife as an example. I hope she don't get uh, mad. But um, sometimes I hear my wife talking to a stranger on the phone. And I, she's talking for 15 minutes. And when I listen to her, I say, oh, my God, if she talked to me like that, man, I would be a prince. She's talking so sweet, so sweet. Yes. And then when she hangs up, hey, boy, get over there. <laughs> I think that's every marriage, right? But if you could talk, if you could, if she talked to me like she talked to that person on the phone, I thought, man, I'm in heaven. What a sweet, sweet woman this is. But it's the same with me. When you, when I talk to, sometimes I talk to someone on the phone and my wife would say to me, man, you are so nice to them. Be nice to me. Because we get in the habit. It's a habit. It's not a good habit. It's a bad habit that we, we treat our, our close ones this way and a, a stranger another way. Yes. It's time to be consistent yes. Yes. with who you are and what you know. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Time to be honest. And, the, the, and the, 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 the first thing is this, is quit fooling yourself. You are not as perfect as you think. I said, don't deceive yourself. You're not as good as you think. Amen. Uh, uh, as we say, oh, but for the grace of God, where would I be? But for the mercy of God, where would I be? So you don't have time to judge other people. You don't have time to judge your brother or sister. You have time to love them. Oh, no man anything but to love him. Love. We, uh, we have, uh, yesterday I had dinner with my, my wife's family, and my, my sister-in-law had, had, she brought a dog, a schnauzer, a mini schnauzer. So I'm with, there, with her the last two days, four, uh, two days, and this dog is there. And I'm telling you what, if God loved us like she loved that dog, we cannot fail. We can't fail. 
and that dog knows, I'm, I'm not even kidding you, that dog knows he is loved. Hallelujah. I mean, he does. He just knows he's loved. Yeah. Yeah. And he sits there like a little baby on her lap, and she's patting it and patting it and stroking it, and that dog says, I'm loved, I'm loved, oh, I'm loved, I'm loved, I'm loved, I'm loved, I'm loved, I'm loved. oh, I'm so loved. Oh, and I can hear the dog say, oh, thank you, God, for giving me this house to live in. They love me. And this is how much God loves you. Yeah. And, and, and the, my, my sister-in-law went to the bathroom. Oh, the dog ran to go get her. She, the dog ran after love. I got to go get her. Where's my, where's my love? Baby? Where's my love? And he waited there at the bathroom door until love came back out. And as soon as love came back out, put me on the lap of love and he stroke again. But this is, the, this is the love. See, the whole world today, if you not notice this, people are mean. People are mad. People are angry. And sometimes we have a reason to be. And the world is like this. But we are, here's what we said. The world is supposed to know us by our love. Number one. They're not mean. They're not nasty. They're sweet. They're givers. Amen. They're patient. That's one, one of the things that Christians need to work on is patience. We don't have a lot of patience, especially with the foolish things. We all know, I don't have time for this. I don't have time for this. Patience can also grow. It grows by practicing it. Practice your patience. Amen. And it says this in verse 2, what joy overwhelms, oh, joy that overwhelms, overtakes you. What joy overwhelms everyone who keeps the ways of God. If you don't have any joy, something's wrong. You're not keeping the ways of God. This is scripture right here. When you have joy, it will overwhelm you. Or, or when you have, uh, not uh, joy, but um when you keep the ways of God, joy will just overtake you. Because you have nothing between you and God. Hallelujah. It's all good. Hallelujah. When you obey God, when you please God, that's what, what God the Father said to Jesus. This is my beloved son in who I'm well pleased. Hallelujah. This is the year where God wants to say about you, I'm well pleased. Now, before I finish my sermon today, there will need to be adjustments and decisions made today. Where you say, and I say, Lord, forgive me for the past. I want to start anew. It's a new year. I want you to be able to say to me in 2023 that last year, he was well pleased with me. Hallelujah. Well pleased. I yes. pleased you. Yes. You was proud to call me a son or a daughter. Hallelujah. I obeyed you to the best of my ability. I walked in love. This is my year of love. This is my year of patience. This is my year of kindness. This is my year of giving. This is my year of just being like God. Hallelujah. And here's a good thing. Yes. He helps you. He helps you. You're not doing it by yourself. Amen? Amen. God will help you. Any, any heart that wants to do better, I'm talking about a Christian, God is going to assist you. He's going to help you. Amen? Amen. Why? Because greater is he who's in me than he who's in the world. What joy overwhelms everyone who keeps the ways of God? Those who seek him as their heart's passion. This is the year where your heart and your passion, your passion for God will be revealed. Amen? Amen. Go after God. Go after God this year. Yes. Push things, all those things that hinder you, all people who hinder you. Somebody will call you and say, hey, let's go do this. You say, no, don't want to go. I want to stay home and spend time with God. Yes. I'm going to read my Bible. I'm going to watch this Christian program. 
I'm going to go pray for somebody. Hallelujah. I'm going to go help somebody and give them food. Yes. Do something this year with the help of God. Be different. Hallelujah. Yes. Verse 3. They never do what's wrong. Imagine if we live this live like this. Verse 3. They never do what's wrong, but will always choose the path of God. Is that true? They never do what's wrong. Wait, wait, wait. Is that true? Can you do that? Never do what's wrong, but will always choose the path of the Lord. You may make a mistake here and, and there, but here's the thing. When you say, Lord, forgive me, and he applies the blood in his eyes, God's eyes, you are doing nothing wrong. Hallelujah. You are doing your best. He's going to help you. Mercy will cover you. Amen. Uh, one song, goodness and mercy, goodness and mercy, goodness and mercy shall follow me. All the days of my life. Amen. Amen. They never do what's wrong, but will always choose the path of the Lord. I want, I want everybody, everybody, even you out there on TV, I want you to say, this year, I choose the path of the Lord. I choose the path of the Lord. Amen. Verse 4. God has prescribed the right way to live. Psalms 119. God has prescribed the right way to live. Obeying his laws with all our hearts. How do we live? Here's the thing. You see, if you don't read the Bible, especially consistently, you're just not going to know what God requires of us. You're not going to know. My people perish for lack of knowing, knowledge. Yes, yes, yes. So God has prescribed the right way to live, obeying, obeying his laws, obeying, obeying. This is the year of obedience. 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 Don't be disobedient this year. Be known as obe uh, uh, obeying God. I'll obey you, I'll obey you, Lord. Verse 5. How I long for my life to bring you glory. When you look at this, how I long for my life to bring you glory. That's where you want to be today. I want to be at a place where I long, I have a passion that my life glorifies God. Hallelujah. Does your life glorify God? Don't answer that. You know the answer. Does my life glorify God? As I follow each and every one of your holy precepts. This is from the Passion Translation. Then I'll never be ashamed. Hallelujah. It's impossible to be ashamed if you're following all the path of God, the word of God. It's impossible. For I take strength from all your commandments. Strength comes from the Word of God. Number seven. I will give my thanks to you from a heart of love and truth. Thank you, Father. I thank you. I'm saved. Thank you. I'm born again. Thank you. I'm healthy. Thank you. I'm breathing. Thank you. I have a roof over my head. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, I have a good church. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. I praise you. I thank you. You're worthy. You know, he loves Thanksgiving. God loves when you thank him. 
I will give thanks to you for my heart of love and truth every time I learn more of your righteous judgment. The only way to learn is to get in the word of God. <clears throat> you know what I find amazing is this. There was a season in my life where I dedicated six straight months to read the Bible. And I would argue with you any scripture you told me. I would tell you you were right or wrong because I knew it. Especially in the Gospels and the New Testament, I could tell you everything. And you know what's amazing to me? Is I still remember those verses, some verses I read years, decades ago, and they still, when I'm talking or thinking, those verses will come rising up out of me. You know why? Because the Bible says that he will... Uh, uh, Bring to remembrance, bring to your remembrance what you have read. Well, if you have not read it, it's hard to remind you of something you never read. Amen. But if you read the Bible, he'll remind you. He'll bring that up at the right time. Once, one of my favorite scriptures that you didn't know this, but this is one of my favorite is in Proverbs. It says this. Um, um, it says. Um, wisdom is like. Apples of silver in picture or frame of gold. And I always picture this frame of gold and silver apples inside. It's just perfect setting. Those two go together. And I think about that. God's word, wisdom, knowing God, knowledge about God. Knowledge sets you free. Amen? Especially knowledge about God. It says this, I will be faithful to all that your word reveals. So don't ever give up. <laughs> Father, don't give up on me. Don't give up on me. This is somebody who's humble and realizes they can't do it without God. I cannot do this without God. I need you, Lord. One uh, song says, oh, I need thee, oh, I need thee, every hour I need thee, every hour I need thee, because without you, uh, uh, it's, the scripture says, in him I live, in him I move, in him I have my being, all in him, hallelujah. Don't ever give up on me, even if I... Have you ever noticed sometimes we all act like a fool sometimes? All of us, we make mistakes, we do stuff, we say something. Have you ever said, have you ever said something, and as soon as it came out of your mouth, you knew, oh, God, I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have said that. Yeah. Well, you say, Lord, forgive me. And then you learn from that. You practice, you become... Better at it. Amen. You know, the Bible talks about in the Hebrews, it talks about um, uh, having the word of God. It says through exercising through or practicing the word of God, you can become skillful. You can become skillful in the use of God's word. And that's what a lot of Christians don't have skill when they use God's word. They use all kind of, of uh, you know, I, I remember one friend I had. And I said to him, um, when are you going to get married, man? You're already uh, 35, I think he was 37 years old. And I know this guy really well. I, he said, I'm going to get married. I, he said, I already have a wife. And I said, no, you don't have a wife. He said, yes, I do. I already have a wife. I said, you ain't got no wife, man. I know you. I know exactly where you live. You don't have no wife. He said, yeah. Uh, right now she's married to somebody else, but as soon as... Uh, <laughs> And I realized, and he's trying to give me a scripture. So I realized he's not skillful in the word of God. He doesn't know how to apply the scriptures right. And unless you apply the scriptures correctly, it's not going to work in your life. Amen? And then people like this blame God. Verse 9. How can a young man or a woman stay pure? Only by living in the word of God. And walking in its truth. Now you think, 
why would you teach a New Year's message like this? Well, this is your entrance. This is your door to what God is doing in 2022 and the body of Christ. There is a revival hitting the earth. But the church has to be ready first. We got to get our act together. Amen. Yes, amen. We got to be better, better, better. I remember I was in America uh, in a place called West Virginia. I'm teaching this, uh, this church. And when I'm there, I'm there for three days. And, I, man, it was like such a heaviness in that church. It was hard to preach. It's like every word I said hit me back in the head. Hit me back again. And I'm thinking, Lord, these people are like a spirit of depression. No joy, no hope, nothing. So then I go, uh, that was the first night. <laughs> then I go praying about the second night. And I heard the Lord so clear say to me, you tell them tonight that if, tell them, say, if you would just try, I will bless them. If they will just try. Instead of just sitting there being a victim, oh, everything's bad, everything. Just try to believe me. Yes. Just try to believe I'm good. Yes. Try to believe I can do it. Try to believe. But just sitting there with no faith at all doesn't please God. Hallelujah. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Hallelujah. So, of course, I went there and told the people, hey, the Lord told me to tell you, just try. Try to believe God. Instead of just sitting there saying, Kumbaya, my Lord, Kumbaya, quit singing, come by here, Lord. Hallelujah. But just try. Do your best, and God will do the rest. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen? Do your best, God will do the rest. Yes. It says this, I have, verse 10, I have longed for you with the passion of my heart. I've longed for you. Everybody wants to be paid for their passion. Everybody. There's not one person who doesn't want to be paid for their passion. Now, we have NBA basketball players are paid for their passion. Your football players paid for their passion. Musicians paid for their passion. Everybody who has a passion, if you know what it is, some people don't know what their passion is, if they have a passion, the passion means, it doesn't always have to be sports, it could be, it could be education or something, but they have a passion to be a doctor, they put everything in it. They pay for the courses, they go, they give their time, they put everything, because this is my passion. And we want paid for our passion. Yes. Well, God should be your passion. Hallelujah. And you should put everything in it Hallelujah. to go after God with your heart. And say, God, you're my passion. We know David, for David, that was his passion. Hallelujah. He even said this, because I've set my affection on the house of my God, I have given my offerings and tithes to the church of God. Hallelujah. He had a passion for God. Oh, this year I believe God will release passion in the church. Passion for him. Hallelujah. One of the songs we sung today called I Just Want to Move Your Heart is from a group called Maverick City. And these are they're from uh, Atlanta, Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia. But this group of people, they're all young. I mean, you don't see anybody over 50. They're all young. And men, when you see them sing, you can see there's a passion in the worship. There's a passion in the thanksgiving. They're not just singing. Man, they're involved. They're, they're not worried about who's watching them. They just want to move God's heart. That's all they want to do. They want to they express their love towards God. One day I was in California. It was 2 o'clock in the morning. And I left the house, 
and I went out into a field. There was a big old open field right there by my apartment. I went out there, and man, I just, something overcame me, and I knew I needed to go out there and scream at 2 in the morning how much I love God. And I'm not kidding you. So I go out to this field, I say, Lord, I love you. And I'm thinking, <laughs> but I didn't care. I had a desire to express verbally how much I love Jesus, how much I love God. I didn't care who heard me. This is not the year to be conservative. This is a year to go out and be ugly for God. Amen. Give it your all. Read more Bible. Pray more. Love more. Forgive more. Do more for the kingdom of God. You want to change God and change your life? Flip it from one to the next. Let him do it to you. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't let me stray from your direction. Verse 11. I consider your word to be my what? Verse 11. I consider your word to be my greatest. Uh-oh. Is that my greatest treasure? Or would it be the husband that God finally gave me? Or the wife God finally gave me my greatest treasure? No. Is it your child? Some people say, that my child is my treasure. Is it your job? Oh, my job is my treasure. Is your bank account? It's your no, your treasure is supposed to be the word of God. Hallelujah. That's what sets you free. Jesus. Amen. Amen. And I treasure his word in my heart. David said this, I have hid your word in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Hide God's word in your heart. To keep me, that's why I hide it in my heart, to keep me from committing sins, <laughs> sins of treason against you. Imagine that. Sins of treason against God. When was the last time you read Psalms 119? I said, when was the last time you read Psalms 119? My, verse 12. My wonderful, verse 12. My wonderful, thank you. My wonderful God, you are to be praised above all. Teach me the power of your decrees. That's his words. I speak continually of thy law. I recite in silence. <laughs> you caught me. I recite out loud your counsel to me. What's that mean? I read his word out loud. Like I'm doing right now. Read out loud. Have you ever read the Bible to yourself out loud at home by yourself? Seems like it goes in twice. Yeah. And quicker. Out loud. I find more joy. Everybody's looking for joy and happiness. How do you find it? I find more joy in following what you tell me to do. You know why? The back to Susanna's sister's dog. They say, Give me your paw. And he gives a paw. Very obedient. And he's happy, happy obedient. But you know why he's happy obedient? Because he knows there is a treat coming. When the paw goes up, the treat comes out. When the paw goes up, 
the treat comes out. And when you know that you are pleasing God, you are happy. You really are. You're happy. Oh, I please God. Oh, hallelujah. I please God. God is happy with me. Is God happy with you? He's happy with me. No, he's not going to give you no treat. He'll bless you or something. But just obeying God, just being pleased, God being pleased with you, that's all you need to go after. Pursue that. I find joy in following what you tell me to do than in chasing all the wealth of the world. Wow. So, uh, verse 15, I set my heart on your precepts. I set my heart on your precepts and pay close attention to all your ways. My delight is found in your laws, and I won't forget to walk in your words. Verse 17, let me, your servant, walk in the abundance of life, that I may always live to obey your truth. Open my eyes to see the miracle wonders, what? Hidden in Scripture. And it's amazing because many times you will not see hidden treasure in the Word of God unless you meditate, study, read, read, study, read, study, read, and that treasure begins to be revealed. And you get what they call a rhema. A rhema word. It becomes revelation knowledge to you. You explain, you're you so excited because you can see it and you try to explain it to another believer and they say, I don't know what you're talking about. Why are you so happy? Well, you got a revelation. They didn't. I'm almost done. My life on earth is so brief. And that's true. So tutor me in the ways of your wisdom. I have three more verses and we're done. I am continually consumed by these irresistible longings, these cravings to obey every commandment. This is where if we can get here. Look, verse 20. I am consumed by this irresistible I mean, something's pulling me to love your word. Something's pulling me towards your word. I have this desire to read the word at 4 p.m. I have this desire to read the word at lunchtime. What's happening to me? What's happening to you is something good. It's God. I have a desire to go pray right now. What's happened to me? It's God. He's changing you. I have a desire to obey. What is that? God, God, God. This is what God's doing this year. He, with his open hand, is going to make it easier for you. Amen. Your displeasure rests with those who are arrogant, who think they know everything. That's nobody in this room. You rebuke the rebellious who refuse your laws. Don't let them mock and scorn me for obeying you. And I'm going to stop right there with the Psalms right here for, 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 for now. I'm going to read something from Dr. Kevin. And this is what he says. You're going to experience happiness when you start walking in integrity. You're going to experience joy and passion and you are going to go after God. You have to remember there was a man named Enoch.
Enoch heard, heard from Adam. Adam would tell him, God and, and your mother and your, your whoever this, whatever, whatever the relationship, God would come down every evening to talk to me and Eve. Every evening, God came down. They didn't go up. God came down. They didn't go up. God came down. That's how much he loves to fellowship. And they came down, or God came down, and God would begin to fellowship. And can you imagine, put your mind right now in that garden, and here comes God. And not an evil intent. You don't have to worry. You don't have to have your guard up. It's love himself comes down. Love comes down every evening and loves you and tells you how good you are and says, name these things and do this and do all good motives, all pure. And as long as Adam and Eve obeyed, love stayed. Love was consistent. And as soon as they disobeyed, love left. If you want the love of God to stay with you consistently, consistently, and not just mercy, but love, you need to obey. You need to be obedient. You need to say, yes, Lord. You need to quit being like a 49-year-old child. Or... <laughs> 70 year old child I don't care how old you are but you know all of us can act like a child every now and then that's right all of us and you know you know right away that you're acting like a child first thing you say is Lord forgive me I'm sorry I was in the flesh for a second I'm back I'm back I'm back I'm back in the, in, in, in the spirit forgive me Lord uh, we make mistakes, and there, there are people who just rub us the wrong way. Yes, that's true. But you don't let that dictate and destroy your whole day. Amen? Yeah. So it says this. And because I obey God, because I follow Him, because I obey Him, I'm going to experience, I like this part here. This is Dr. Kevin. I'm going to experience a spiritual overthrow in my life. Hallelujah. That's what we need. Yes. Get rid of the you, old you, Hallelujah. the old Christian you, not the old sinner you. Get rid of the old Christian you yes. and be, get a spiritual overthrow to the point 12 months from now you won't recognize yourself. You say, I've changed so much for the better. Your wife says, who are you? It's good. It's new. Your husband says, what happened to you? It's good. It's new. Your pastor says, I know it only could have been the word of God. It's time to change. Yes. Hallelujah. It says this. The Lord's plan for 2022 is that we encounter His joy. And joy comes from obedience. When you obey, when you obey God, you know all is well with my soul. Every door that He opens, I can go through. Every promise is yes and amen to me. Hallelujah. Because I have... O obedience and joy. Then it says this, not just happiness. Happiness is temporary. Joy is permanent. And then it says, I, I have three more sentences and I'm done. Uh, 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 Dr. Kevin says this, 
God this year, 2022, has set up a higher standard. A higher standard for the church. And we are going to, uh, we are going to want to do the right things before God. We are going to want to do the right things before God. Everything I said is for you this year. But while you're sitting in your chair, why, while the word is going forth, the Holy Spirit was ministering to you. He was reminding you of some things. He was putting things in your mind. Showing you things. Revealing things to you. And you come to a place where you make a decision. I want to be like God. Everybody stand up, you out there in TV land. Stand up also in your house. Stand up. We're going to pray for you. With this message comes a decision, comes a prayer. I'm going to do it myself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Ready? Just repeat after me. Father, I hear your word today. Thank you so much that you love me enough to send me the truth. I hear it. I believe it. I receive it right now. Lord, this year, you will become my passion. I will pursue you. I will pursue your word. I will be able to, you'll be able to say of me, well done, well done, good and faithful servant. Father, I ask you for your mercy this year, for your grace, for your supernatural help, but especially for your outstretched hand over me. Forgive me for the past, and thank you for a fresh beginning. In the name of Jesus, I walk in it right this moment. In Jesus' name, amen. You can have a seat. For you out there in TV land, I believe that if you pray that prayer with your whole heart, God is making a transformation in your life. God is doing what you couldn't do all these Christian years. God is going to do in your life with your cooperation. Amen. So God bless you. We'll see you on the next broadcast. Amen. Hallelujah.